All right, I have a way of solving this that feels really intuitive and easy to me, but I get that it might not be for you. So I'm gonna do my way first, and I'm gonna show you a formula that you could use at the end. Um, when I look at this and they're asking for the product, uh, or they're giving me the product, I guess, of the of the solutions, they're giving me a quadratic. It's a little weird looking, but it, it kind of fits the normal standard form of a quadratic. Um, basically, my instinct is, all right, Normally, if this were a normal quadratic, my way of finding the solutions uh, would be to factor. So, okay, I need to factor this so it looks something like this, and then, you know, it would equal zero, and I would know the factors. So I know the middle part is weird, but focusing on the x squared part, there's 57, just kind of based on the, the numbers in the middle part, I guess like it has to be 57x and x, right? Those would multiply to get me 57x squared. And then a and b would multiply to get me a times b, right? So that's the c term. So I'm really focusing on the two ends and the, and the simple parts of the foiling that I would need to do to get those numbers. So I, again, it's hard to describe because I kind of just like think about it. And then because of the middle, where it's 57 is, is multiplied by b, I know that I need to construct this in a way where the b could be multiplied by the 57. So I have to put it in the second one because it, if it's in the first one, it wouldn't multiply, right? If Think about how you would FOIL this. You do 57x times x, you do 57x times b, you do 57x, or you do x times a, and then you do x uh, a times b. So, uh, that's how we would get this, and because the A's and the B's can't really be combined easily, we'd end up with a weird kind of middle term because we can't smush those numbers into one. We have to kind of keep it as this separate thing. Um, so I was able to see all that, and then if they want the product of the solutions, well, the solutions, you would just set each of these equal to zero. So this one would be easy. That would be negative B. And then this one maybe requires a little bit more algebra, so I'll show that to you. We would subtract A from both sides. We'd get 57X is equal to negative A and we would divide by 57. So this one would be x is equal to negative a over 57. And if they're supposed to be the product of these two things, we multiply them. So they're saying that kab is equal to the product. So that's negative a over 57 times negative b. So we can start simplifying. The negatives will cancel, and then we'll have the a times the b on the top, and 57 on the bottom. So maybe you can see it, maybe you have to do some more solving, but regardless, the kind of the A and the B don't really matter anymore, and this is a one, and so that's what K is. K is equal to one over 57, which is choice A, which is the answer. So, like I said, this may be weird to you. Uh, it, it, there's There are definitely some questions in the SAT where there's some sort of formula or whatever, and they kind of just want you to see the right thing, right? They, they're hoping that you, um, just know how the thing is built and there's like a, a moment where a light bulb goes off in your head and like, ah, that's how we got there. And then you can kind of solve. That's what's happening for me here. But normally I don't like that method because sometimes the light bulb doesn't go off and you're just staring at an equation for a long time. And how do you force that? How do you force that moment of insight? Um, maybe we could use some strategies here. Um, I don't, I think we could arithmetize. I don't see why we couldn't pick a value for a and b and just kind of go with it. Um, so I guess, let me try that. I've actually never done it. So bear with me here. Let's say a is one and b is one. Then this equation would be 57x squared plus 57b uh, would be 57 that times one. So that's 57. This would be 57 plus one. So it'd be 58x plus one is equal to zero, right? a times b. Uh, okay, so then you could factor that. You get 57x and x, and then this would be more like trial and error, but it kind of has to work out that it's one and one, right? So you can kind of trial and error, but there you go. So this is going to be x is negative one, x is negative one over 57. And again, the product is kab, which we now know is k times one times one. So that's just k is equal to negative one over 57 times negative one. So K is equal to one over 57. Yeah, arithmetize works here. Arithmetize. Hmm, all right, I didn't think of that originally.
But it works, right? We got some unknowns that don't seem to matter, right? They kind of carry through the problem. So it makes sense that we can make up some numbers for them. But that's not what I was thinking of when I first said that there's another way to do it. Um, we're going to use a formula that I have never, ever, ever used in any SAT question ever, okay? It is a formula for the product of the solutions in a quadratic. And it is C over A. So if we have our quadratic in uh, standard form, we can choose the C part and the A part, and we can um, use them to, to figure this out. So in this case, the C term is this, the A over B. So I'll kind of just come down here, A over B. And the A part is 57, right? So that's the product of the solution. So there's no numbers for the A and B, but there you go. That's what it would be. And they told us, though, that that would be equal to K, A, B. And notice that's exactly what I had at this point right here, right? So again, the, the A, Bs would cancel and we'd be left with K is equal to 1 over 57. That is actually probably the fastest way to do it, is to use that formula. But like I said, I've never used that once in my entire time taking SATs, which we're talking about 15 years now. So is that the way the SAT intended? Maybe. Um, is there a formula we're going to need more? Maybe. Um, but Odds are good you don't have that memorized either. So that's why I like these other methods is they, they allow us to get it if we don't have this very specific fact. But you might want to add that one to your memory, maybe make a flashcard for it or something. The product of the solutions is going to be C over A. And just to add in one more formula that I do use very often, the sum of the solutions for a, a quadratic is negative B over A. Those two together... Um, uh, you know, are kind of in the in my mind in the same category, but the sum of the solutions comes up a lot more. I've definitely used that on the new test, the old test. It's it's definitely much more familiar. So try to memorize them both. Uh, hard question though. Hard question. Lots of different paths that you can take depending on how your brain works. So hopefully one of those methods will work for you, and you'll be able to get this hard question right.